Good evening and welcome to Unity on the Rivers Good Friday service for 2021. I'm Reverend Ogan Holder and I thank you for taking the time to tune in on a day where we give remembrance to a time in our history, Christian history, spiritual history of a momentous event that speaks to us even to this day after thousands of years. Let us begin this service by taking a moment of prayer. So I invite you wherever you are, if you are comfortable, whenever you are watching this service, to gently close the eyes, connect with the breath and connect with the heart. And allow ourselves to be open to the meaning and the message of this time. A time where we may recognize and honor a sacrifice. And we see it as an invitation into a deeper experience of the Christ within us and as us. Let us this day remember, it is a day, a time, that is a deep demonstration of love. And for this, we are grateful. And so it is, amen and amen. And at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Brian, who will treat us with a song. My love is up and has left you with no warning. It's not always going to be this great. All things must pass. All things must pass away. Oh. Now the 
darkness only stays at night time And in the morning it will fade away Daylight is good at arriving at the right time It's not always going to be this great All things must pass All things must pass All things must pass All things must pass away All things must pass All things must pass Thank you, Brian. That was beautiful. And this evening, we're also joined by our music director, Meg Rain, who will now treat us with all I ask of you is to mm. remember. Is to remember me as loving you. Yeah. Meg, it does bear the question how we choose to remember this day that we observe as Good Friday. How do we choose to remember the man Jesus, the message uh, that he left with us? Uh, you know, traditionally in the Christian story, um, this, this day, Good Friday, is, is recognized as Jesus' crucifixion, and the crucifixion being recognized as uh, Jesus taking on um, all of humanity's uh, sins. He was, he was served, he was a proxy, uh, a, a, a spiritual scapegoat, if you will. And I'm not sure if you know where that term scapegoat comes from, but it comes out of an ancient 
Hebrew tradition um, whereby two uh, kid goats that were uh, born of the same parent um, would be brought to the temple and one of them would be sacrificed but the other one the priest would symbolically uh, place the sins of everyone onto this goat and allow it to escape into the wilderness and take all the sins of the people with it it was literally a goat that is, was allowed to escape uh, a, a scapegoat and um Jesus was seen as that in the traditional Christian story. And as a result, seen as this exceptional being, this, this, this figure, this literal one and only son of God who was placed here for that reason. Um, in, in, in unity, we've, we've shifted, we've evolved that story. We see Jesus, again, not as this great exception, but a great example for us to follow. And as you know, when we read, interact, understand, interpret the Bible, we do it through a metaphysical lens that, that each, each character, each story, each event represents part of our own unfolding. So when we think of the crucifixion story, that we that we recognize on Good Friday, where where does that leave us um, from a metaphysical point of view? What is if Jesus is the example? What what is what is he saying for us with his uh, crucifixion? And it's important to sort of recognize a few things here. For example, um, when we say Jesus is a great example, in unity we recognize and view Jesus as we are. Um, fully human and fully divine in potential as well. And we know over the course of human history, there were, there were many other avatars who were able to, to touch more of that potential of their divine self and demonstrate it um, in the waking world. We think of Jesus, we think of uh, Siddhartha, who would, be, who would become Buddha, uh, the Buddha. There, there's so many other countless examples of, of people uh, like this. So, so that is our potential as well is why Jesus would in his ministry say these things you shall do and greater um, because he recognized I think he was trying to say at the time I am not that unique we are all one and the same and if I can do this so can you if I can be this so can you so when it comes to this crucifixion, what is it that we are to do? Are we, are we to allow ourselves to be crucified as well? Sort of, but not really. The, the crucifixion was, a, was a, um, um, an example that we can replicate more on the metaphysical level. And what it's really representing is that idea of, of us willing, being willing to sacrifice any thoughts and beliefs that would try to tell us that we are anything other than divine. And often we hear this uh, in unity and other new thought traditions is we've got to, we've got to get, uh, get rid of and eliminate the personality. We've got to allow the human self of us to dissipate so that all's left is the divine of us. And, um, I don't know that that's how I understand it. And part of it is, um, let's go to what the cross represents, because in the story, Jesus was crucified on the cross. But when we look at what the cross metaphysically represents, it's really demonstrating this idea of that vertical part of the cross represents the 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 current of our divine life whereas that horizontal represents the current of our human existence and if you realize the cross doesn't just have a vertical or just have a horizontal it's got both so in having both what that cross says to me metaphysically is that is that we do embrace and live the fullness of our humanity and the fullness of our divinity and what we know is that our humanity can be flawed in some ways. And the most where humanity is flawed is when we take on ideas and beliefs that tell us we are anything less than divine. 
when our humanity takes on the ideas that, for example, we are unworthy and do not deserve to be loved, that's less than divine. When our humanity takes on the idea that there's limited resources and that there's lack in our world and lack in our life and, and we have to hoard so that others uh, can suffer and we're going to be okay, that's denying the, div the divine truth of abundance in the universe. Again, when it comes to universal abundance, it's not a pie whereby I get some, you get less. No, there's, there's, it's an infinite supply. So, so if we, I think what's being called of us to do and what I truly believe is that when we do our work to eliminate, to cross out, to sacrifice, to, to heal, these limited thoughts, these limited beliefs, we will experience both the fullness of our humanity in a positive way and the fullness of our divinity as well. And that way we can, we can unite with a, a greater sense of selflessness and truly realize a spiritual depth like we've never had before. We can truly awaken to the fullness of the possibility that we are as a divine being. Not to jump ahead, but that's really what Easter uh, represents as well. And perhaps one of the most important tools that we can employ to get to this place is a tool of forgiveness. And I know it's a word that's thrown around so often and we hear about it so much, but I think it bears repeating and repeating and repeating because if we truly, truly embrace and employ the practice of forgiveness, we would be amazed at how both ourselves and this world will be transformed. As he hung on the cross in Luke 23, verse 34, we read that Jesus says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. More often than not, we don't realize when we are holding ourselves back, punishing ourselves, putting ourselves down with the limited thoughts, with these false beliefs about ourselves. And the forgiveness process starts with ourselves. And when I say forgiveness, think of forgiveness as not necessarily a thing we do, but a state of being that we always walk in. We always walk in a state of forgiveness, a state of realizing that the fear and the resentment and the separation thoughts that we have are not the truth. The truth is of love and oneness. Uh, there's a term that we might have heard in more traditional Christian circles and, and, and even we read about it in the Bible of repentance. Uh, repentance is this idea of turning away from sinful actions. And, and when we look at it metaphysically, sin is the idea of attempting to negate the truth of our divinity. Any thought, any words, any actions that seek or uh, that, that, that represent anything less than love less than the divinity of who we are. In unity, we consider that a sin. And we're not punished for it, but more, more or less we suffer. We suffer when we sin, right? Because if we don't demonstrate unconditional love to ourselves and others, it, we suffer and we know what that feels like. It feels like separation. It feels like loss. So the idea of, of forgiveness is truly turning away from those thoughts that we are anything less than divine. And again, it begins with ourselves. It is through the forgiveness, releasing limited thoughts and embracing who we are as divine beings that we can begin to achieve true spiritual healing. And, and it's not a matter of, of effort as Tara Brock taught us in Radical Acceptance, it's of openness. Are we open to the idea of forgiving others? Are we open to the idea of of releasing the, the limiting belief we have of others? Are we open to the idea of releasing the limiting beliefs we have of ourselves? Are we willing to release our attachments and our resentments? 
or do we truly want to still hold on to them and and believe them about ourselves and about our others in the world and don't get me wrong this is very very challenging and we have evidence of out there in the world every day of folks not doing that but the point is we need to see that and remember that we lead by example. Just as Jesus led by example, so do we lead by example. This entire Holy Week has been a little bit of a bittersweet sort of Holy Week for me. It's the last one that I will be here serving as your minister of unity on the river. And, and today, is, uh, as we speak about this forgiveness element, it's really important moving forward as a spiritual community that we all walk in that space of forgiveness forgiveness for me as your minister who may have disappointed you in a lot of ways forgiveness for those who have left this community for those who have left forgiveness and release of the resentments that they may have against the community and have against me why is that important so that so that when we get to this place of, of, of returning as a body together in person and celebrating and moving forward, we do so in a new awakened state that no longer is rooted in anger, in resentment, in negativity, but in true love for community. So I invite you between now and Easter Sunday and beyond to embrace this idea of Good Friday and the crucifixion as a message of a message of forgiveness, as a message of releasing, searching and releasing any resentments, any anger, any disappointments for what has been and what hasn't been, any fears about what might come. Simply allow yourselves to rest in that place of releasing, releasing, so that individually and collectively you can arise and awaken to even more of the divine that you are and the good human that we have the potential to be. So I'm going to invite us to take this into a time of meditation and Meg will lead us in with the song, Stay With Me. Let us continue in that energy of watching and praying. 
you haven't done so yet, I invite you to gently close the eyes. Take a deep breath. And let's shut out any of the outer distractions. Connect with the body. Continue to find a place of centered stillness. ourselves to be open to the possibility of forgiveness. Let us allow ourselves to be open the possibility of deep healing. Let us be open to the possibility of fully loving ourselves. Let us be open to the possibility that we are unlimited divine beings. In every moment walking from divine love divine peace. Let us be open to knowing that as feelings and beliefs that would say to us we are anything less than divine arise. We see them we acknowledge them without judgment. We release them. We allow them to pass on from us. So that we simply always walk as the Christ. It is who we have been called to be. And it is how through us the world will be transformed. So let us rest in that knowledge for a few moments in the silence.
Let us hold the intention for ourselves and all others of walking in that place of forgiveness. Always open to releasing and making space for the fullness of who we are. In this way, we always walk in peace. We always walk in connection of oneness. In this way, we make today a good day. So let this be the message from the life of the man, Jesus and the Christ, a message of peace. Peace I leave with you. between now and Sunday Easter morning to reside in that place of mindful, conscious peace with hearts open and willing to walk in deep forgiveness of deep release of deep love for yourself and others. And we will see you on Easter Sunday morning. Namaste.